This is the first in a series of videos aimed at providing a basic understanding of app development within Mobile Together using a variety of data sources and techniques. We will cover the user interface of Mobile Together, go over all of the key components that you will need to be familiar with creating apps, and we'll walk you through creating your very first app. All of the topics covered in this tutorial are also written about in greater depth in the Mobile Together Designers online manual. This manual can be accessed from the help menu and contains information on all features available to developers. Projects within Mobile Together consist of one or more pages. A page is a view of what your end user will see on their mobile device. Pages form sequences which become a workflow that will be executed from top to bottom. Your pages may also contain subpages that are not part of the main sequence and allow for quick navigation off of and back to its parent. Both pages and subpages are comprised of controls. Controls are elements which a user will see and interact with on a page that include labels, buttons, images, tables, and more. Controls can have properties attached to them which will control both their appearance and what happens when a user interacts with them. Finally, each page is driven by a collection of data sources known as page sources. Page sources are the heart of your mobile application and define how data looks as well as what it contains. These sources can be derived from local structured files like XML and JSON, databases, API requests made via SOAP, REST, and more. When you open Mobile Together Designer, you will be presented with an interface that is optimized for drag and drop development. The top of the screen contains the toolbar. This bar will provide access to global items such as variables, functions, and localization, as well as give you quick access to workflow simulation. In the center of the screen is the design view. This is a view of the current page you are working on and represents what your application will look like when deployed to a mobile device. The pages pane on the left side consists of all pages and subpages in a tree form that currently make up your application. Below the pages pane is the controls pane. All controls that are available to be placed in the design view show up here and can be easily dragged out to the main workspace. All of the data sources that the current page can access are listed on the right side of Designer in the Page Sources pane. This pane allows you to quickly add, remove, edit, and access data from SQL, XML and JSON trees, API, and more. Finally, the Properties pane allows for manipulation of the currently selected control, table, page, or project. Page sources are the heart of every Mobile Together app. The designer allows you to pull in data from a variety of sources. You can start with a blank XML, HTML, or JSON structure, choose to reuse an existing structure from elsewhere in the project, or import a structure from an existing file. Data can be sourced from databases, HTTP, FTP, REST, and SOAP requests. Finally, you can also create a data source that is derived from an XQuery statement or even a FlowForce job. Today, we will focus on a new XML file. However, each of the other data sources listed will be covered in subsequent tutorials. Finally, we get to action trees. Action trees consist of actions that are defined for both control and page events. An action can be executed when a page loads or when a user interacts with the application, such as when they press a button. Actions include, but are not limited to, modifying controls, executing an X query statement, displaying a message to the user, and more. Actions are capable of manipulating nearly every aspect of a given design. To demonstrate the basic functionality of Mobile Together, we will be creating a simple one-page application. This application will read data from an editable text box, store that data, and then write it to a non-editable label with the press of a button. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create an XML page source from scratch, add multiple controls to a design, link page sources to controls, and finally execute an XQuery action when pressing a button. To begin creating your app, create a new project by navigating to the File menu and selecting New. This will load a blank design in the Designer. Mobile Together apps can run on many different types of devices. The Designer allows you to preview your app using templates for many different devices. Devices can be selected using the Change Preview Device drop-down in the menu bar. This demo will be shown using the iPad Preview Device. With the project created, the next step is to add new data sources. In the Page Sources pane, click on the green plus sign. Select the first option for a new, empty XML document and click Next. Leave all the default values in the Add Page Source window and click Finish. A new, empty XML data source has been created and will appear in the Page Sources pane. Double click on this data source to rename it. I'll call it Hello World. This new data source needs a root XML element. Create this by right-clicking on it, selecting Add Child, and then Element. 
Double click on the new element and rename it to HW underscore page. Note that only one root element can be created per data source. With the root element created, create two more child elements to hold the user's data. Do this by right clicking the HW page element and selecting add child element. Name this element input underscore in. You need to ensure that this element always exists and always has a value assigned. This action can be performed by right clicking on the element and selecting ensure exists on load. Repeat these steps to create one more element called input out, remembering to select ensure exists on load. With the data sources created, you are now ready to start populating the designer. First, create a title for this page by dragging a new label out to the page design and type in the title. To make this title stand out, we can adjust the text size, font weight, and alignment. You can adjust these properties using the Styles and Properties pane or from the menu bar. For this example, make the text size 65 pixels bold and centered. Next, drag an edit box out to the designer. This control will accept text input from users. A page source will need to be assigned to this control in order for it to be functional. You can assign the input in element by dragging it from the page sources pane to the designer. Now all text written in the text box will be stored in the input in element. Next, add a button to the designer with the text click me. You will assign an action to this button momentarily. Finally, add a label that will serve as the output text for your app. Link the new label to the input out source by dragging the element out to the designer. You will now need to assign an action to your button. Do this by either right-clicking on the button and selecting Control Actions for On Button Clicked, or by selecting the button and clicking on the ellipses next to the Control Actions in the Styles and Properties pane. You want this button to take the value a user has entered in the Edit field, stored in the Input In, and write it to the Label field, stored in Input Out. This is accomplished with the Update Nodes action. Drag the Update Nodes action underneath the On Click action. Update nodes accepts two XPath or XQuery parameters. The first defines the element to be updated and the second defines the element to read this data from. Open the XPath XQuery expression editor by clicking the XPath button next to update nodes. This editor allows you to write, paste, or construct an XPath or XQuery statement. For this application, you will want to expand the hello world data source and double click on the input out element. This action will construct an XPath statement leading to the input out element. Press OK and repeat this action for the result, selecting the input in element this time. Your app is now created and ready to be run. You can locally run it in a simulator by clicking the green simulate button in the menu bar or by pressing F5. Enter a value in the edit field and notice the data source is being populated on the right side. Prior to pressing the click me button, you will note a value present in the input in element, but not in the input out element. Click on the button and note your text string is now in both elements as well as the label field on the screen. Finally, change your text and see how the two elements respond, with the input in reflecting the new data and the input out reflecting the old data. End the simulation by clicking on the close button. If you haven't already, download the free Mobile Together Designer and check out our other demonstrations at www.altova.com/mobile.